Hi everyone, today we're going to change the dressing on this patient's left hip, which is covered by an Aleven dressing. So first we want to make sure that our package is intact. We check the expire date on the kit, open it on the perforated edge just to make it easier for us, remove the outer packaging, and we'll eventually throw that in the garbage. We want to make sure that we always open the first flap away from us. That prevents overreaching later on when we open the fourth flap. So here we are exposing the forcep that's hidden underneath the fourth flap. So we just carefully loosen up that edge and then let our finger take over and then choose our orientation. Today we're gonna set it up into a square format. So we're just rearranging everything accordingly and then we can always move the tray so that it's a little bit closer to where we need it to be. Okay, we're gonna pick up our drape, which we will use just as a clean drape to absorb any spills when we start irrigating. So we're gonna open it up away from our field and then set it underneath our patient. Of course, we're gonna ask our patient to turn a little bit more so that we can place it underneath them. And then we're gonna pick up our garbage bag, set it up towards the foot of the bed. Um, we wanna make sure that we are setting it up so that we maintain a triangle shape, a triangle form between the dressing kit, the wound or the patient, as well as the garbage bag so that we avoid cross contamination. We're gonna take out our metal forceps and set them towards the side. It's nice to place them in the middle and then push them outwards so that we don't contaminate our blue forcep in setting them up. Sometimes the blue forceps are a little bit more finicky to use, so just take your time with it. So we're gonna place our blue forcep down and then we're going to prepare the normal saline. We check the expire date and carefully pour it over our receptacle. Doesn't really matter where you pour it. I just chose to pour it over the two small portions of the receptacle, really doesn't matter. Put the saline away and then we can set up our 30 cc or 30 mil syringe. We wanna make sure that we have the lure lock tip because that's the tip that fits well with our irrigation tip. So we carefully open that without contaminating the tip of the syringe. And then we go ahead and set up our irrigation plastic tip. Carefully banana peel so that we avoid contamination as much as possible. Lure lock both into place and then set it down so that it's prepared. Now we can don clean gloves because we are performing the no touch sterile technique today. And you may need to use an alcohol swab just to loosen up the edges of the dressing. You may or may not need to, it just really depends on how well it's sticking on the patient. And here we are assessing the amount, if any, of any exudate and the type of exudate. And because we've touched that dressing, we're gonna go ahead and change um, into another fresh pair of clean gloves, sanitizing in between if necessary. We're gonna take our blue forcep and remove the packing, taking note of the amount of exudate and the type which this one is saturated with serosanguinous uh, exudate. And we also want to make sure that we count how much packing we're taking out and compare it to the previous documentation if there's any. So here we've taken out two and uh, we are also go going to discard the blue forcep as well because we no longer need it. So now we are going to irrigate our wound with 60 to 120 cc's of normal saline. 
And that's again, the minimum that is required according to Fraser Health. So start from the top to the bottom of the wound in a zigzag motion. When you reach the bottom, stop and then go back to the top if you still have some solution left. And you just keep continuing as much as you need so long as you use up at least 60 to 120 mils or 60 to 120 cc's of the solution. And then you also want to make sure that the fluid that's running is, is uh, clear, I should say, and that tells you that the wound has been properly cleansed. So you can irrigate as much as you need to. We're going to dispose our syringe and go ahead and clean the peri wound. And because the wound is quite small, we can go ahead and use the 2x2 two two swabs, or the 2x2 two two gauze, I should say. Wet it with a saline, wring it out, and um, cleanse the peri wound in sections, however you want to divide the sections. Here I'm just doing um, basically like a half circle. So now we've cleansed the wound and we've cleansed the peri wound. We're going to go ahead and dry. Uh, we don't really want to dry too, too much and cause trauma in the wound bed. So we're just absorbing any excess moisture that may be uh, pooling if there are any. And then we're going to pat dry around the edges of the uh, peri wound or around the peri wound. The same thing, you can divide it in, into sections. You can just use your judgment at this point. Now that we've cleansed and dried, we want to take the time to assess the wound. So here we can see that there's pink and red wound tissue which denotes healing and then we can see a little bit of slough around the 12 o'clock um, part of the wound. We can also see a sinus tract also known as tunneling towards perhaps the 7 o'clock area and then a little bit of undermining between 11 to about 1 o'clock. We're not going to go and measure those areas because we haven't had the training to do that but we've just noted that. We also assess the peri wound. We can see that it's intact. The edges are not curled over, hardened, or sloping over. Uh, we don't see any erythema or contusion. So the peri wound looks pretty good. And here we are um, checking the length of the wound as well as the width. And we are also going to measure the depth of the wound. So we're going to use a sterile cotton tip applicator because it's a little bit softer and we can actually uh, touch the edge of the wound with this so we can get a proper depth reading. So once again, we want to use a banana peel method just to make sure that we don't contaminate those uh, cotton tip applicators. So we try to get as, as close of a depth measure, measurement as we can. We can uh, compare that to the uh, ruler afterwards. And because I touched the tip of that cotton tip applicator, I'm going to go ahead and remove these gloves and then don another new pair. And sanitize as needed. So now that we've assessed the wound, we are going to go ahead and collect um, CNS swab if it's necessary. Um, this is just an example of when it would be the right time to collect a CNS swab. Remember that we want you know, gentle pressure so that we can collect a little bit of the moisture and we want to collect this swab 
from a viable tissue. We can label that later on and then send it to uh, the lab for assessment. And then now we can go and pack the wound bed. Uh, so we're pretending that the order calls for moist to dry packing. So here we are taking a small piece of two by two, wetting it with a gauze, wringing it out, and then unraveling or opening it to the best way we can so that it can be fluffy once it's inside of the wound. So it's not so heavy on the wound bed. Because we remove two, we usually sort of imitate how much was used, unless of course the wound has gotten worse or the wound has gotten better, in which case you may actually need to add more or apply less. Okay, so we try our best to lightly pack the wound and then we can use the Q-tip or the sterile cotton tip applicator just to help guide the packing and avoid trauma to the wound bed. We're gonna take uh, a skin prep or a Cavalon wipe so that we can apply it to the uh, peri wound and make sure that it allows for a you know a little bit of a barrier between the adhesive and the patient's skin and it also allows the adhesive to stay a lot better on the skin or stick a lot better onto the skin. So here we are we are using uh, the same dressing which is called Aleven Classic. It already has um, the sticky side so we don't need to use tape. So here we're just trying to make sure that we don't contaminate the middle portion which is the portion that's going to cover the wound and from the middle to the outside or to the edges that's how we want to smoothen out the dressing. So now that we're finished we just want to make sure that we collect all of our forceps including the blue forcep that we used earlier and that gets discarded into the sharps container. And that's how you change the dressing.